this is Bram of 45 Creations on this episode of Risky Stays. We are at Duke's Indy with Amanda. Thank you hey. for sitting down with us and decorating this, this beautiful table spread here with our candy and all that. But how are you doing today? Doing pretty all right. Awesome, cool. Well, we're here way before the club opens so mm -hmm. we get to see every every nook and cranny of it. So, um, but yeah, just tell us a little bit about Dukes if uh, anyone's not been here. This is actually my first time, so it's super cool to see it. But um, yeah, just tell us a little bit about Dukes and what you guys do. And um, So Dukes is in uh, what we are constantly remind of, reminded of was formerly the Ice House restaurant. So it was built in the 80s um, by a family. We're in front of the Warner truck lot, about four minutes south of Lucas Oil Stadium. So super close to downtown um, on technically the southwest side of the city. Um, At but first we, I thought it was Fountain <clears throat> Square, but. So yes and no, like kinda I, we're kind of in no man's land yeah. over here. Um, you know, really, once you get close to the river, it's kind of like, oh, nobody wants to claim <laughs> right. this. Um, so uh, so we we say we're close to Fountain Square, you know, um, when we're describing it to people, it's less, less than a five minute drive. Um, so Bates Hendricks and Garfield Park, just kind of in that general vicinity. Um, but so we've been here at, as Dukes for, we celebrated six years in March. Um, and we are a venue first and foremost, but we're also a bar and restaurant. And we focus on upholding the traditions of country and Western music. Um, so that's going to include three chords in the truth. We like to say, think more Waylon, not so much Wallen. Mm -hmm. Um, that's but that is, phrase. yeah. <laughs> and there's fun phrases all around, like "please shut the fuck up," and uh, yeah. you called yourself the honky tonk handler. <laughs> is your because I asked her what her uh, title is, and she didn't know. So we came up with honky tonk handler and president of Dunkus. Or I think Dukes. that just might be Dukes. Oh, I just they ran together. <laughs> <laughs> Dunkus. That makes no sense. But yeah, I'm dunking on him. Honky tonk handler is a fun, uh, a fun phrase. But yeah, so like, so country western, kind of like, like old school country. Precisely. Like tough country. So yeah, I'll, I'll use my little visual here. So we've got like the highwaymen. So think like outlaw from the 70s and 80s. But we go even before that. So, you know, uh, Hank Williams is definitely a huge staple. Um, basically, anyone that died early <laughs> kind of <laughs> kind of seems to be um the spirit of outlaw country Star um, too bright. Uh, exactly um ernest tubbs is a another one that i personally really love um on the lady side kitty wells is just an absolutely incredible voice in country music and um definitely performed a lot of hits that a lot of folks know um and there's there's just a really long history of this type of music um and origination in appalachia and um, borrowing, if not outright stealing, um, you know, folk music traditions from other places. So be that, um, you know, you've got like a lot of Scottish and uh, English murder ballads that kind of transformed with this Appalachian sound and also the introduction of the banjo, which is an African inst instrument. Um, and so all these things kind of came together. And then around like 30s or 40s, country Western music really kind of became a thing. Mm. Um, and so our focus is, you know, these traditional instruments and telling all these incredible stories. And um, if it has pedal steel, I will probably book you. <laughs> well, that's awesome too, because like some venues will just book everything and anything mm -hmm. and just keep it occupied. They'll do like, not to, you know, throw shade at those venues, because obviously you got to pay your bills and Absolutely. stuff like that. But, you know, they'll have like bingo nights, <clears throat> trivia nights, they'll have cover bands, karaoke. I know you guys, we'll, we'll talk mm -hmm. about karaoke in a second. But it's cool, though, because it's, yeah, you have a very niche group of people, like probably the fans are very niche, the bands are very niche, the whole vibe. I mean, it, it looks like a saloon, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, and you don't see that a lot because obviously as a business, you know, you guys want to thrive and be able to put as many butts in seats and, and sell drinks. Uh, and that can be hard if you're just focusing on one track. But it seems like you guys do really well with just the the one style and then you guys do do you do a little bit of like singer songwriter if it's kind of like americana oh themed? yeah absolutely we've got some uh, a lot of local folks that perform here like we've got uh kara cole who i adore um she's a sweet angel and she is country adjacent um mm -hmm. so we'll go in that direction um and then uh, I've got a gal, Laura Balke, who uh, traditionally has not done country western music, but wrote a country western project a few years ago, finally got it recorded. She's releasing that music. Um, so it really becomes not quite a catch all, um, but when we 
if we're thinking about music as a historical tradition, that's going to include a lot of collaboration across so many different yeah, genres. Yeah, there's all different influences, like how like Elvis, like you know, brought the soul a hundred percent that that era, and then obviously like outlaw country is kind of more like punk rock, mm -hmm. like fuck you type vibe. Oh, a hundred percent. Which is cool because we were talking about earlier. You came from like the punk hardcore. Uh, lifestyle scene and then you're working at kind of like a country honky talk mm -hmm. bar but it's that it makes sense because that like kind of country western like like tougher western attitude kind of has the same attitude as punk like uh i know david allen co was like very known for like getting in bar fights i actually oh, saw yeah. him uh at some weird state fair in the middle of nowhere in south indiana it was wow. really cool super fun yeah but yeah, but, you know talk, we were talking about metal and stuff like that just talk about like your musical uh background and what you like so um, there's a, there are quite a few of us who are uh, the punk rock to honky tonk pipeline. So, um, you know, I, I grew up with an older brother. He's about 13 years older than me. He got me really into thrash metal and thrash um, through Metallica is how I discovered Misfits and because um, they covered them. And um, and so punk rock was born in me. I, you know, I had a lot of skateboarding friends. There's a ton of punk present in skateboarding. Um, and it, it was a really beautiful time to just really organically share this music. And like I made you a mixtape like was really and truly a thing. And that's um, was a huge element of discovery for me. Um, and so started out with punk and definitely, you know, kind of merged into hardcore and thinking like, you know, New York youth crew scene. And, um, and then that, you know, my metal influence stayed in there. And, uh, through that, honestly, I did discover this music. Um, mm -hmm. I'll say it was, gosh, what was that 2003? I went to see, uh, the flaming lips, and they were on tour with Modest Mouse, De La Soul, um, a hip hop group I really, really love. And it's so weird that they were on this bill. Mm -hmm. um, and then a uh, group Cake also. Yeah. And then the Hackensaw Boys, who I actually just booked to perform the record I saw them promoting then. Um, so that was definitely one of my introductions. Um, I also feel like growing up in the 90s, it was absolutely impossible to escape the influence of bluegrass country because it was everywhere. It, was huge. it yeah. was huge. And I think a lot of people either are too young to remember that or have a really short memory on that, that, you know, Garth Brooks was the biggest still artist is. on still the is planet. One of the He's still huge. Yeah. Um, and, you know, opinions on Garth Brooks aside, um, we don't we don't have to bring them into this. <laughs> but um, quick side note, do you do you like comedy podcasts? I like laughing. I like funnies. There's a there's a comedy podcast that accuses Garth Brooks of being a serial killer. It's hilarious. We won't go into that. But I actually think I've seen that. Yeah, theory. It's, it got <laughs> it's, so, it got so out of hand that um, it actually got like to the news because it was always an uh, it, the podcast is called Your Mom's House. It's a huge. Mm -hmm. It's Tom Segura who's a, yeah, he's a comedian. Yeah. I love watching comedian podcasts. Yeah, but they uh, they just like they talk about like how he just talks real creepy and he's just really like weirdly ingenuine. Um, but yeah, they, then it eventually made it to the news and it became this big thing. And then like, oh he, then he had cease and desist things. I was going to say them. the estate <laughs> was like, no, it was so stupid. <laughs> but anyway, the, the point is, is that uh, yeah, in the nineties country was like, like that. I mean, country today is really big too, but that was like Absolutely. the golden years. It for, was, it was inescapable yeah. and, um, sad backstory for me. My mom passed away when I was 11 and I don't remember country being particularly present, but there was something about that sad ass event that all my dad listened to for a long time after that was country radio. Yeah. And I mean, he had CDs to play in the car. He also really was into um, Natalie Merchant, um, probably because she has one of the saddest, most melancholy voices I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> some people are um, good, like that's the thing. Some people are just, some people really, are just good like, really good at- Some people are just like, I'm really good at being sad Depressing <laughs> stuff, yeah. But the, I mean, if um, it works, it works. And you know, if it works, it works. And so I've never, um, you know, he and I have talked a, a lot about music. I used to always think that so much of the music I held dear was because of my mom's influence, which absolutely is true. But mm. as I've gotten older and had conversations with him, I realized, oh, like there was a lot that he contributed to my musical upbringing. Um, and even like even down to metal, you know, like he loves Uriah Heep, he early Judas Priest and um, Sabbath and all of these bands that really started this revolution in in a particular genre. Like I often think about how insane it must have been to just be in 1970 and hear some of those riffs for the first time. Like well, your yeah, brain just like, exploded. That's like exploding, modern day you 
yeah, like hardcore, we were talking about like hardcore and mm-hmm. grindcore, like the extremity of that at that time was probably yeah. just like crate because like you had, you know, like the Bee Gees and you had, <laughs> I mean, Zeppelin was obviously a little bit more like rock and roll, but then you had like, like heavier, yeah. heavier stuff coming Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And you had cool. a lot of the outlaw country was, you know, yeah. at the same time as that. Um, and so it's just, it's, I don't, I don't know why officially, I don't know why he gravitated to our country, but it became a soundtrack after that. Um, you know, because in the car it was dad's music and it was not my music until I got a disc man and I had headphones and I could escape into yeah. the world of the smashing pumpkins at the time. That's nice. all I cared about. Uh, um, ben, ben is probably, when he's watching this, he's gonna be kicking himself. He loves smashing pumpkins. Oh he would have God. probably talked to you for an hour just about it. I would absolutely love to talk about it. Well, I would, we'll actually, do a I would love interview. to talk about the devolution of Billy Corgan and- he, He's got some strong opinions about that too. Oh my gosh, we would go on forever. Um, but anyway, so, but, yeah. uh, but all that to say, so like obviously you, you kind of had the metal influence and country came into it and i wanted to bring that up and we were talking about it before is it, it you don't have to just like just one style of music obviously with this club it's more genre specific mm-hmm. but each genre of music has its own feel or its own like energy whether it's a outlet country is like the fuck you but it's mm-hmm. also like you know don't 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 but there's also fuck you of punk and metal there's fuck you of rap so um we were talking about like how with music, it can be kind of a stigma. You're like, oh, I'm only a metal fan mm-hmm. or I'm only a country fan. I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of country people that come in here that are also like, well, I also like pop. Or if you guys do karaoke, they might sing something that's totally not, you know, what would be going on here. So maybe talk a little bit about, you know, having like a little bit more open tastes musically. A hundred percent. Like we, I, I think because of people hear the word honky tonk or they see a picture or they heard of an artist or an event that happened here and they have this idea of Dukes itself being this one static thing. Um, But like anything else, there's subtlety, there's nuance. um, And, you know, there there, a lot of understanding of that has been removed from, I think, like visual social media communication. Mm -hmm. But um, we are music appreciators first and foremost. Um, And that's absolutely one of the things I love about Dukes is that we are a club that we're comprised of musicians um, and music lovers, and that's who we attract. Mm -hmm. Same, you know, on both sides. All the musicians that play here are so excited to see us on the schedule, so excited to be somewhere that they know is going to be comfortable. Um, And, you know, we have, you know, we have bands covering uh, crazy shit you'd never expect to hear in here and tastes of all kinds. And I always kind of draw it back to, um, you know, a lot of people think of like Nashville as this hub for mm. country music. Um, it's a metal hub can, too. And the, it, thank you for bringing that up yeah. because I, it is just this breeding ground for so many things to happen. It's general creativity. General creativity. And that is what it is about first and foremost. And yeah, if you have pedal steel, I'll book you. But <laughs> dude, if you put pedal steel in the middle band, I would lose my It'd mind. Be cool. It'd be well, super you, sick. Have you heard of a native howl? I have not. They're thrash grass. So they're bluegrass thrash. You probably like through Facebook, you might have seen them like cover stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they're, they're, a, they're a bluegrass band, but they're like they, they play like a thrash band. Hell yeah. And they kind of like have like they sing and they'll have like a little bit more aggressive. But there's like crossovers all the time. There's a lot of country specifically, like at least if you're thinking like pop country, mm-hmm. like Hardy is like getting into that rock metal country vibe. Now that might be you know, kind be of, really honest. I don't even know anything about pop sure. country. So but, yeah, school me. But uh, but like at least with mm-hmm. like modern country, even if you're not into like the pop country stuff, um, there is a lot more crossover. So my. Um, one of the guitar players in my band plays in Chase Rice, which is a big country artist, but he's like pop country. So, mm-hmm. uh, but the funny thing is he actually, their new album that they're working on, I got a chance to hear a little little uh, snippet, but um, they're going more outlaw country and even their show, they do a lot more like kind of rock metal infused country. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be a big trend right now. And I don't know if it's because like societally things aren't maybe like the best in the yeah. world. Usually a lot of times when metal is really popular, there's a lot of crazy things going on or like, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, like Rage Against the Machine was a huge thing because of like mm-hmm. a lot of like political like riots and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, you are seeing like rock and metal kind of emerge into country. But I guess I was bringing up that point just because um, uh, country bands could, can also be rock bands and they can also be metal 100%. bands. So like here, do you guys see, you know, the bands you're booking 
Are you, are you getting a little bit more like genre fluidity and in, in their stuff? Oh, a hundred percent. And there's a lot of bands that I'd love to bring bring in that maybe have a little bit more of a soul or jazz influence. Are you, um, the artist I think of that's most popular right now would be like Charlie Crockett. Uh-huh. Uh, I went to see him a couple of years ago and he's not only the most charming person to hear speak because he's just got this like Louisiana, Texas mm. line uh, accent. But, you know, he he looks out at the crowd and he's got his little brow furrowed and he says, you know, a lot of people say I'm a country singer. Blah, blah, I call this the blues. And like he, <laughs> he and then he like just goes right into it. And um and so there, there is so much crossover influence. I think even like take two seconds and think about geography, right? Memphis and Nashville, n- not that far apart. Right. And they v- a- have absolutely vastly different, vastly different um, but absolutely artists are collaborating between the two cities and playing in both and, mm-hmm. and sharing knowledge. And um, I think that's when we, when we pigeonhole places or people or creatives, we really miss out on a lot of opportunity to allow greatness into our lives, whether that be through learning something we wouldn't have otherwise, a new perspective, um, hearing something sonically that's, that's interesting that then motivates us for, or propels us to do something and be experimental and take chances and stay risky, if you will. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> didn't even do that on purpose. Um, but, uh, I, that is an energy that I want to welcome into Dukes. And I think another thing is just the static expectation of what country is, you know, it's mm. three chords in the truth and it's, it's this, that, and the other thing, but it includes bluegrass. It includes new grass. It includes yep. Americana. You know, we've had, um, you know, we've had like psychobilly bands we've had, oh, so, you know, sick. so, Oh, so fun. And like bordering really on the edge of like, punk and we we did do an event for a little while um it ended up just not being sustainable with our other programming but it was called that ain't country just very tongue-in-cheek like this is what's happening tonight and it right, was just blatantly an, out of the main blatantly out of the main and it was an invitation to local bands to come on in and play the duke stage and experience our hospitality and um and you know bring an energy here that we didn't typically have. And also like make sure that it's understood that this is an open door for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, Are you guys uh, 21 plus or all ages? So we're all ages. Um, We have a couple of restrictions on that. So during shows uh, we have like a partition that under 21 have to be on the other side of. Um, But we are open for dining. Um, We have like lunchtime hours. And then, you know, when we're not having shows, we're open for dining. And so it's a big room. I mean, it's do you guys clear room. the tables out or do they stay? So it, it depends on um, on the experience that, you know, we're cultivating with with the booking agent. We, you know, if it's going to be more of like a listening room show, the tables will stay in here. But if it's sure. going to be a rowdy show, the tables won't. And even then, we still have more seating than just about any club our size I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, um, you got the, and like the whole bar. Yeah, we've area. got, those will always stay. So we've got like seven tables, seven, six o'clock tables just on that side. We've got the bar top um, table stay. And then uh, we've got a couple in the back that are always there. So, so what's capacity like three, four hundred? It is not even close to that. Um, capacity is one hundred sixty-seven. Wow. Yep. I mean, it's. I, I, I guess it makes sense, like from a fire code stance. But I mean, exactly. it's, it's a huge. I mean, if you and cleared it, and all it the tables, on, yeah, it depends on our capacity really is restricted by how many tables we have. So we just have to be really mindful of that. Um, I definitely have been in rooms that feel smaller than ours that somehow have a bigger capacity. This feels like, it feels like, it feels like a three, 400 cap room, but for what I, I think so much of that is, is based on metrics that, uh, don't make sense to a non-firefighter brain. Sure. Um, so it's, you know, I it think might it has be that, to do that with skinny hallway precisely and... with the openings, with the exits, sure. with, you know, um, accessibility with, uh, for, for a long time, um, the placement of our exit sign had to do with it because, um, because just it chopped 50 people <laughs> totally off. chop them off. Sorry. Oh, yeah. you, you have two you. bathrooms. A uh, hundred people can't get yeah. in. Yeah. Yep. Good luck to you. So, um, yeah, we, we are definitely a more intimate experience than you're going to get most other places. And, you know, I, I think we're so lucky to bring in artists, Mm -hmm. um, that are also so willing and interested in meeting you 
in, you know, they'll sign your records. They'll shake your hand. They'll take pictures with you. They'll, they'll probably hang out with you this at some other bar setting. elsewhere. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's um, a really cool, intimate setting. I mean, like we're right in front of the stage, but I mean, if you're sitting right over here, you're a rock throw away from seeing them. And I'm sure there's probably 100%. all kinds of really big artists here. And we were yeah. talking about, um, before, you know, obviously with like big bands, you get to a certain point where you're only playing arenas, mm -hmm. you're only playing big rooms. Um, do you guys get opportunities to play with those bigger like arena bands and bring them into this small setting? Or is it kind of a mix of like regional or what, what's the what's the general bands that come through here? It's definitely a mix. Um, so I would say, you know, we have international touring bands all the time, weekly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely our big thing. We uh, we're really built by locals in every way. And so you're going to see locals in here every single week mm -hmm. um, and singer songwriters. And we were really lucky recently, um, just a couple of weeks ago, William Matheny, he plays in John R. Miller's band and he's also got his own musical career. He had emailed and was just like, hey, I'm going to be passing through. Do you have anything? And we had a, a songwriter night set up already. So he got to be the feature songwriter. So even if you're coming to something that is like, you know, free to you to step in the door, low cost of entry. Uh, if you do that, please put a little money in the bucket for the bands. Mm -hmm. um, but you might, you may get the opportunity to see somebody you wouldn't ha expect to see otherwise. Um, and, you know, so we'll have shows that are really intimate like that. Um, definitely more listening room experience to somebody like we just had a Hannah Dasher in here who is just a sweet baby angel. Um, if you're a TikTok person, you'll know her from a cooking show she does on there called Stand By Your Pan. Um, and she is, she's sponsored by Fender. She's absolutely. For the cooking show? No, because oh, <laughs> she shreds, yeah, she shreds awesome. that chicken. Um, no, she, she's an incredible guitar player and she is definitely on the cusp of leveling up. Um, and she deserves every bit of it. She is just a really incredible person to be around. She has a really kind energy. And I mean, we've definitely have had bands in here that are nowhere near selling out the room that act like they're doing sure. everybody a favor right. by, by being here. And she, um, you know, they, they, we, we generally don't book them again. Um, uh, that's the a, that's added, a thing is no added, band is too good for any venue. So always be absolutely, respectful. Absolutely. Always be respectful. Especially for the people that are putting on the show. If you piss off the sound guy, he's probably just going to go, what? <laughs> yeah. Turn good luck to you. Um, but yeah, and, and definitely be kind to the bartenders because the bartender may actually be the head bitch in charge. Exactly. So uh, the, uh, the honky tonk, <laughs> honky -tonk handler. handler. Yeah, I got to go back to my notes. I, I remembered it. I want to make sure I said it right. President of Dunkus. President, yeah. President of <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> Duncan. Corporate. Um, well, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I do want to talk about um, a little bit more about Duke's, uh, the, the change of ownership, because mm -hmm. I know that was a big thing. And yep. we want to talk about that. So we will be right back. And we're back. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, we're back with Risky Stays. Uh, before we left for the break, uh, we were talking about that uh, Dukes has had a change of ownership. So I'll let you kind of dive into what that all entailed and, and where things are at now. Yeah, I'll actually start at the very beginning. Um, so in late 2017, 2018, um, Dustin Boyer opened Dukes. And so we refer to him now as our founder. Um, his dream was to open a honky tonk in Indiana. He... Uh, was raised on this music by his grandparents and he was extremely passionate about music and musicians and creating a home for them, not just a venue, not just a, you know, black box room to play, but a place, um, that just was really respectful toward them, made sure they were comfortable and gave them the lion's share of the door, which is not how most venues function because it's honestly very hard to stay open that way. Um, and so no, no fault on them for uh, taking a little cut. But uh, so Dukes, you know, had had some pretty wild years uh, for the first two. And then 2020 happened. 
Now, Dukes is uh, technically a live music venue, and so we were not able to really stay open um, like a lot of restaurants, you know, even though absolutely restaurants struggled. Um, but it was- Well, it's was even harder if a, a good majority of it is putting on an event. Precisely. Because at least like you can do takeout, but I mean, yeah. I'm sure the food here is great, but it's like Dukes isn't necessarily known as yeah. just like a restaurant. It's probably like you want to so go do the show. I will, I will say some people do actually know it's just, just as a restaurant nice. because well, good. Um, Dustin perfected this like fried chicken recipe that everybody really lost their minds over. Nice. It's called, um, it, well, he only had the whole damn thing in uh, the interest of saying inflation, what in tarnation, we offer a half damn thing. <laughs> um, so it's a little less expensive, a little less food. Um, so he actually did kind of help pay the bills by nice. doing carry out chicken and cases of uh, beer. Um, Cause we do have a liquor license that allows okay. us to do carry out. So, so there, there was some way to bring in revenue, but it just wasn't, wasn't the same. And he, I mean, he really hauled ass doing what he could to keep it open. And we, uh, we're really lucky to have a, a couple bands, um, the cold hearts being one of them. They have a, a Tuesday residency with us currently, but they, uh, they did a live stream, you know, to ha- kind of help raise benefit. money benefit. Um, and then we had some involvement, um, with Indiana venue Alliance, Josh Baker, um, doing different shows with them. Uh, in an outdoor space. And so Deuce wasn't able to to reopen until 2021. Um, and about two weeks after reopened, Dustin passed away suddenly. So that was really devastating, uh, not only for the music community, for artists. I mean, we had huge artists hitting mm-hmm. us up through social media, like, oh my gosh, is it true? Right. I can't believe that this happened. Um, just a tremendous loss for everybody and a tremendous loss for a lot of people that came to Dukes and loved it as their home. Um, and so it was really hard, I think, for the business to find its footing. The folks that were left behind, um, mainly Maeve, who was kind of helped with everything. Uh, she really stepped up and took on a lot of like management role, um, particularly with bar management and just everyone is just kind of scrambling to figure stuff out. Um, Dustin had a lot of connections. So a lot of the bookings were like through text or through social sure. that we didn't immediately Hard have to access to. Hard to get a hold of. Totally. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so 2021 was just kind of a really, really tough year um, for us because of that loss. And uh, I mean, in 2019, we, we're no stranger to loss. In 2019, our uh, door guy, AJ, uh, passed away in a motorcycle accident, um, like, And that was absolutely devastating. So when you do come to Dukes, you will see we have got a memorial up with both of them. And then we have one specifically for AJ um, up by the door and took like all his steelworker union pins. And they're kind of pounded into the wall there Um, just because their spirit built this place and continues to to motivate us. And like we we only are because because Dustin was because he thought of this. So um, there's just a tremendous amount of respect for that. So. I um, had started working at Dukes in 2021. I was a fourth grade teacher at the time, and um, that does not pay very well. I just bought a house and learned that I needed to make a lot more money. So I was moonlighting here, um, just kind of bartending shows was was my level of involvement. And um, about eight months into that, I started to help out with social media. The person that we had doing social was already doing social for a really big company and it just Didn't really enough time. super overwhelming. Um, so it's, a lot. Uh, it's, it's a, a lot. Quick side note, social media, people think it's just, oh, like, or if, you know, we do social media services and they're like, oh, that's too expensive mm-hmm. or why do I need to pay for this? You'd be surprised. It's really, really time intensive. You have to Absolutely. always be on it. It's a big thing. Sorry, I just wanted to yeah. speak well, out and for it, it makes my, you know, my current position, since that is what I'm at, I mean, I'm 24-7. I, ha- I have to be on D&D at certain hours mm-hmm. or, like, I'm straight up not sleeping. Yeah. So um, social media is a beast to handle. Um, and then that's, you know, not that's not even, like, the back end of it, like, running ads and, and using all these different metrics and, and data and keeping I mean, up with people DMs and responding to everybody. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and then there's, like, a weird long list of, like, sex robots that DM you. And, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it's, it's... That's the cool part of social media. That's the media. cool part. It's really fun out there, kids. Don't open those messages. No. Um, so, so then uh, Maeve, um, it's 
kind of a very sweet story, but uh, Maeve fell in love with Dustin's brother and moved out to Montana to be with him, and um, which ruled for her. And um, they are just the sweetest and um, still remain very much the heartbeat of Dukes. I text her all the time and, hey, this artist is coming through or, hey, this thing is happening. And, um, and I'm just so grateful that they still get to be connected to yeah. this place. Um, but... 2022 kind of uh, went through. We had new management, and um, I think that that was a really overwhelming time um, for everybody, and not really having a blueprint again because well, you're also Justin, afraid. You're like, you know, he did everything. So he like, did how everything. Are, how are we gonna? Because you want to have a certain standard. The fans Precisely. have a certain the, expectation. Yeah, and it's it is very hard to compete with the memory of someone. Sure. Um, because a lot of, I think the experience that people had at Dukes was made better by Dustin being here. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, when that's not there anymore, I'm sure it's extremely jarring, right. um, you know, to be. Well, uh, some people don't even think it's the same place. You're like, well, that it, totally. that was the heartbeat of the place and it's gone. A hundred percent. And there's no one else on earth who could possibly care as much. And right. I'm here to tell you there is. No, um, I mean, that's, the thing is that, that, that's also a good sign of good leadership that everyone around him got it in mm -hmm. terms of like the the standard and like wanted to make sure that it was all following the same thing. Everybody was on board. So mm -hmm. obviously it's, it's a big, it's a big loss when that happens, but if everyone around him is embodying what he did, then you want to keep his life and legacy alive by uh, absolutely. continuing to do the thing that he loved. Cause he would want you guys to keep doing it. Absolutely. Um, and so, so at end of 2022, uh, the, kind of bar manager at the time decided that this wasn't uh, where they wanted to be and went elsewhere. Um, and I had taken over booking by this time also. And so I just kind of became the de facto leader, honestly, right. like, oops, I was good yeah, at my job and now I'm done. in charge. Yeah. Like, um, and so there was definitely a learning curve, but um, 2023 was a really beautiful year. I think for us, because so much that was lost as far as, um, you know, like we, we were just talking about as far as kind of how people perceived Dukes and, and all the hope that they had in it was regained because mm -hmm. we were able to really build up, um, new artist relationships and focus on, um, uh, you know, booking agent relationships and get folks in here that hadn't been in for a really long time, both on stage and off stage. And, um, during that time, um, Dustin's partner who had, he opened Deuce with, um, who was just like a previous coworker who just really loved Dustin and believed in him. Um, you know, he, he was just kind of going along with Dukes because he loved his friend mm -hmm. and, um, he kind of came to me and was like, you know, I don't, I don't know how much longer my heart is in this. I, you know, my kids are out of the house now. I've got things I want to do, places sure. I want to go. It's very overwhelming. There's a lot. It's very that overwhelming. Goes into and here. even and he was he really trusted myself and the other staff and gave us allowed us a lot of autonomy. Um and even then, just I mean, just the accounting side of a business is a lot. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot. If you want to keep the lights on, there's it, a lot of things. You there's have to a consider. lot of things you have to consider, and a lot of vendors you have to contact when X Y Z thing, you yeah. know, X Y Z ten thousand dollar thing XI, breaks. And yeah, X Y Z laws. You got to follow certain codes, fire yeah. codes. I mean, it's just absolutely. We're, we're very lucky it's, that this is a digital business because when COVID happened for us, yeah, I just had to put it on the back burner and go work a job, and then when yeah. things came back, it's just wherever. But the joke is uh, whatever warm place we can set up in is where we, we have our <laughs> office. But that's all right. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, no, it's it totally like if there's if there's anyone out there who just thinks it'd be really cool and fun to open a music bar venue restaurant. Don't expect um, to make money. Do your research and don't plan on making any money for a while. Well, even um, uh, uh, like, for example, like, you know, Joe Rogan opened a uh, club out in uh, Austin. Mm -hmm. It's a comedy club. But the way he runs it is it all the money goes to the comedians because he wants it to be a good like breeding place for it. But he said as long as he breaks even every month, he's happy. He's not planning on making money on it. Not saying that you can't do that on a venue, but most of the time you are going to be scrapping and clawing because it's like you were talking about music of the 90s. 
back mm-hmm. then you didn't have social media or, or all this other stuff to watch it online. You had to go to shows. And sometimes people would just go to venues because they just wanted to exactly. see. But, d- and that's really- harder now because people are like, oh, well, what, what's the band? Are they popular? Do I have to pay? Do I have to do this? Why can't I just watch it at home? That's I'm sure that's exactly. probably something you guys run into as well. As- oh, certainly. That is definitely something we've battled. And I think that's that was like part of the magic in 2023 was really navigating that and figuring that out. Like, OK, so, you know, we love these locals and the way venue math works is t- traditionally is like we can give them band a finite amount and it's the amount that's brought in through ticket sales right and so if we are not to have if we're gonna like do some freebie shows or kind of how does that really work on our end we are not we don't have you know all these crazy sponsorship partnerships we don't have um you know we're not holding hands with Ticketmaster secretly and nobody knows like there's just there's a lot of ways that places can function um on a corporate level that you know they have revenue streams outside of what it appears they may have on the surface. Um, and we, we don't have any of that, any of that, you know, um, country is often described as three chords in the truth. And we're like three chords in a dream. Like it's all dreams, um, here at Duke. So, so, uh, you know, we, we really, I think we're able to rebuild a lot of lost faith, um, during that year and Andy, uh, was, was ready to go. Um, and everybody understood it immediately. You know, he, he kind of broke it to me. He was like, Hey kid, this is what's going on. And I was like, I thank you for doing this as long as you did. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine going on two years after my friend died just to, it's a lot. Just to hope that well, then like that the, dream can live. It's you like know? the memory. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm sure Dustin meant a lot to you too. But it, it, with him, them being best friends, it's like the memory might hurt him being mm-hmm. here. You know, exactly. Sure and I like, know that we we still have folks that it's it's hard for them to come in here, um, and I can completely understand that. And you know, I will extend as much love and hospitality to mm-hmm. them um, as I would anyone else when they when if and when they do come in. But I can completely understand why you wouldn't want to. It's comforting for some and it's heart wrenching for others and not everybody's ready to to deal with that Mm -hmm. um and so 2023 brought us closer to that you know we had a lot of folks come in that hadn't been and so we came to a point where andy was either going to close or sell the business those are those are the two ways out right Mm -hmm. um And I had, I had booked this band, um, local band, and I always tell them they're my favorite local band, um, Johnny Logan and the Roughnecks. And I want to be very clear. This is, they were my favorite band before one of them became my boss. Um, (laughs) (laughs) but I had, uh, there, there's this, uh, fellow that comes in here. His name's Michael. And, um, he had come in for a show and he was just like, Hey, you should really book my friends sometime. They're, uh, you know, it's a uh, five welders and a school teacher and they're really, they're really great. They're five awesome. Wel- that should be their band name. Right? Five welders and a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> it's about as long. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, and I was like, all right, well, cool. And one of Michael's favorite guys is this, uh, fellow Tyler Lance Walker Gill. I like to call him the man of many names. He's from Louisville, but he, he's like a Dustin find. Um, and he, Dustin kind of like single-handedly help Tyler build awesome. a, a, fan base here. Um, and even to the point of like helping produce some music along the way. Um, so Tyler was going to play and I put these fellas on the show. I was like, well, we need, I need an opener. Do you guys mm-hmm. want to do it? And, uh, so they did and they were blew me away. I like my jaw just dropped. Cause I, I, I don't usually do this, but I, booked them without hearing them. <laughs> I asked Tyler if sometimes it was you gotta cool. Go on to, sometimes you got to go on a way. You got to follow the heart. And I asked Tyler if it was cool. And he was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, so we did it. And then I was like, oh, my God, they're actually super good. Um, this well, is awesome. Then another thing, like, between booking agents and, like, mm-hmm. venues, it's you can't – this sounds bad, but, like, you can't risk – doing a bad booking over and over or, like – so, like, they – Exactly. If, if, if a booking agent gives a band a green light – especially if they're like a respected booking agent, they're putting their reputation on the line too. So like if you're cool with a booking agent, that's going to open most of the doors. Yeah. And I, I mean, I have agents that they'll send me someone and of course I listen to it, but Mm. I already know that I'm going to, I'm going to work with them. They they know what works in your venue too. They're like, Hey, this is great for you. We were going to put them here, but 
this yeah, is better. But this is going to be a really good fit, this yeah. room. Yeah. Um, and we're really lucky. I have one agent I work with frequently, and he's also a musician. And I think that's one of the reasons we work together so well. Like I said, like Dukes is run by musicians and, you know, working on his side of things. Like he's negotiating things that are mutually beneficial for everybody. You know, the well, bottom I mean, line for the agent is to like, get as much money for their person as they can so that they can then make right. money off of it. Cause that's just how the structure, right. that's um, how they get paid, that's that's how they get paid at the end of the free, day. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think a, a musician booking is just like a no brainer fit because, um, they're just really looking to do what's best for everybody. Yeah. And, um, and so, so it's, it's really cool to get to have that relationships on, on all sides. Um, so fast forward, um, you know, Johnny Logan, the Roughnecks, they play a couple times. Um, they they really burn it down. I, I think the third time I booked them, um, to headline and they like sold out, which was awesome. awesome. Um, super awesome for them. And, uh, I think it was after the second time, um, Patrick, who, uh, he plays guitar on the band, guitar and keys. He, uh, they were, you know, or came up to order for me after the show and, and um, he was like, hey, I, uh, you know, I don't know what the like the deal is with the like, ownership here. Like if you guys, you know, would like want a partnership or anything. But he's like, I, I've got a couple bucks. Like, it'd be cool. It'd be cool. This place rules. It needs to stay here no matter what. And uh, I don't know what it, I hadn't told anybody about my well, conversation yeah. with Andy that we were going to sell her clothes. Um, and he came to me. And so I like, I was like, this guy's probably just a little drunk. Right. And, you know, so I brought down his info. We contacted him and fast forward several months and him coming in and like scrubbing toilets and just like really seeing like what it is all about, how this, how this ship runs, mm -hmm. how it operates, um, learning as much from me as he could and, you know, crunching numbers on his end and consulting with people. And lo and behold, we got a new honky tonk dad. So, um, so Patrick Kennedy is the owner of Dukes and he is, uh, hardworking. He's honest. He, I love that he's a musician. I love that he is somebody who, um, he, I mean, he is so kind and generous. Like we, we make our deals with the bands and then, um, we run a percentage, um, mm. beyond that, which is pretty standard yeah. for, for, um, rooms, in general rooms, our size tend to just do a door side, but we always want to make sure that there's some sort of sure. security I mean, for a band a, hauling a out big, there. Big, good they got to know a hundred percent. Um, and so, uh, I mean, he will throw his own personal money in the tip bucket on top of that. Like he just, he is so supportive and kind. Um, and you know, he's told me about going to Nashville and doing the same thing. Cause in, in Nashville, country oh, like clubs, having another, another, no, club? like throw money. In oh, the tip bucket. Oh, okay. That's just like, he, he really understands that particular culture. Sure. Um, cause that is kind of just like a, a feature, well, you wanna, you wanna put your money feature of Nashville. You see. And he just like, he's like, Oh my God, these guys are great. Like they, they deserve this stage. They deserve all the stages. Like, right. um, and so, it's it's really cool that we get to not only book music here that's that's you know kind hardworking people but it's genuinely music that we all really love very good um yeah. very good and super talented and and i think one of the one of the incredible things about Dustin's reputation was he would be like, Hey, this band is really good. Come see him. And no questions asked. People wouldn't even listen. Up. They'd be like, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we're building that back and that understanding is coming back. And, um, you know, we really want to be the premier place for like the next artist you've never heard of. You know, we've had Coulter Wall has played here and Sierra Farrell has played here. She played like a free show on a Monday and now she's, you know, headlining, um, huge rooms and and playing stadium shows. And, That's a cool thing and, Indianapolis has done. A lot of these uh, like mid-sized venues, they've caught a lot of artists right before they went on their stadium tours. Absolutely. Um, and and it just feels really good to be a part of that process. Mm -hmm. You know, we would love for folks to continually come back here. And there are, there are people that, you know, are very comfortable at the club level and stay there. And because then as a musician, it allows them the opportunity and flexibility to be home with their families and, yeah. you know, whatever their priorities are, like there's, there's a way to be a musician that 
Um, you don't have to suffer. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to give up a ton. Um, and you know, you can have different goals and ambitions. Not everybody wants to sell out stadiums. Um, there's some people who expressly probably don't want that. A lot of bands do weekenders or they'll do like yep. a week and then they'll be off for a couple months. Exactly. Cause if you, if you plan it out with merch, which if you want to hey. support a venue or an artist or anything, the merch, that merch, man, you could buy that stuff. You could have one of these shirts that says, I'm probably going to buy one of these when I leave here. Please shut the fuck up. <laughs> Buy it exclusively at Dukes. But no, I mean, stuff like that, that supports. So yeah, I mean, like, kind of back to like Dustin putting money in any bucket mm -hmm. he sees is you yeah. want to put, if you want to see the thing that you love continue to thrive, I mean, it would be nice if everybody could just do things for free and, you know, it would be, I, would, yeah. I would love to film everyone for free and, and not charge anyone. But it's like, if you're going to run a business, you have to have some type of, some type of moving capital. So absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I think honestly we could probably end on that note there with uh, yeah. with just the whole. I like that whole second half of this where it was like the the yearly progression of of Duke. So it sounds like you guys are in a, a great place now. Um, but yeah, uh, that's your camera over there. So yeah. if you want to plug like the socials and maybe some stuff that's coming up for Dukes and uh, we can wrap it up. Absolutely. So our I'll start with our merch. So the please shut the fuck up shirt is actually like a neon. Uh, <laughs> Design that was uh, made by a local artist, Jill. Yeah, and they have Bisek. a. You can't then, see it on camera, but it's way yeah, up top. Way up. It's above our stage, and we always say like that's a direction, not a suggestion. We are not here to hear about your like heating and cooling debacle or whatever right. it is you want to talk about instead of listening to the music. So, um, so there's that. You can uh, find that on our website, dukesindie.com. Um, we're on Instagram, dukes underscore indie. Facebook, dukes indie. If you just look up dukes, you're probably going to find dukes energy, which we are not. <laughs> um, we are working. Working on recruiting a uh, a youth to run a TikTok, um, and then one whole youth, one whole youth. Oh, hope that's enough. Between um, the ages of eighteen and sixty five, <laughs> any of them will do. Um, and then coming up here uh, soon. This may not be out before this is over, and so if you didn't go to this, you're going to be really sad. Uh, but picking in the backwoods, it's our first hand at a festival. Oh, cool. so this is going to be next weekend down in Brown County in collaboration with Coyote Radio Show and Podcast. We've got. Arla McKinley, uh, Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band are headlining. And then we've got just a ton of really awesome people that have played here and elsewhere. Um, but yeah, come see us. We've got tons of free uh, entry events if, you know, ticket price is a barrier of entry for you. But even then, we are probably a third to half the price of right. comparable venues in the area. We always try to make it accessible for everybody while maximizing what the artists seen can leave with. A local venue be I mean it depends on the artist, but I haven't seen it be more than thirty bucks. Yeah, and we're hardly we're never close to that. Right. So um so yeah, we making it accessible because country and western music, music in general has always been by the people, for the people. Mm -hmm. And like if we make it to a point where people can't enjoy it, like Right. Really, what what's the doing? point? What are we doing? Yeah. So. Well, cool. Adios.